So, LA ain't an easy place to visit. Why it's so? Los Angeles is a, I would say, one of the most difficult places to be a tourist. It's one of the most difficult places to visit uh, because it's really hard because it's really hard to know where to go. Um, it's not a city with a typical urban structure. It's not a familiar structure. Many places you go to, you can use uh, sort of a framework of um, knowledge and recognition that you have developed over visiting a number of different places. And you can apply that to wherever you go. You can say, okay, I'm, I'm getting out of the airplane, I'm about to get on a bus, or a uh, I can hail a cab, or I can take a train. Um, I can I can go. I can find the center of the city. I can I can see the sights. There's there's established tourist pathways. Los Angeles doesn't really have that. It's very it's and therefore it's extremely challenging to um, figure out where to go. Um, it's a city that rejects. Uh, I would say, uh, to be dramatic, maybe to be over dramatic, I would say it's a city that rejects tourism and rewards investment. In other words, it's a city that rewards people who are willing to stay for months at a time, years at a time, even decades at a time, um, to get to know how it actually works. And it's the kind of place that rewards that. So. It's kind of, it's like, it's like a, um, it's kind of like a tough love, um, diff, um, kind of like a, 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 a tough teacher sort of a friend who doesn't give you the candy right away, but gives you rewards for investing yourself and losing part of yourself. If you're willing to lose part of yourself in the city, the city will pay you back. If you want to just gain something uh, immediately, it may not. It may slap you in the face. It's a city that has a lot of identities. It's a city that is full of uh, ethnical identities. It's a city full of lifestyle identities. It's a city full of subculture, culture, standard culture, capitalistic culture. Why? Uh, how can a person try to experience this, even if he has <laughs> limited time? What, Fair what, enough. What would you suggest to do? Well, this is... So, you may be frightened by my first response. Uh, <laughs> and the answer is to experience the city with someone who lives here. Come if, you, if you're going to come to Los Angeles for two or three or four or five days or for a week, um, come and meet someone who lives here. Have them... T or at least have someone tell you where to go. Or at the very, very least, plan your trip in advance with a lot of research, okay? Yes, Los Angeles has a number of stereotypes, as you suggest. It's sort of like the... Um, um, uh, it, it's, you can find anything you're looking for. Like many big cities, you can find anything you're looking for. Except that, in my opinion, in Los Angeles, uh, that, that, that saying is even more true. Um, you can find any um, political position. You can find any uh, uh, um, method for understanding the city. It's all available to anything, to anyone, to anything you're looking for. Um, and because, and that's because it's so big, it's so diverse. Um, there's, an, you, you can um, experience so many different things. Um, uh, all the stereotypes are true, and none of the stereo stereotypes are essential. In other words, you can find everything you've heard about Los Angeles, you can find, but none of them describes Los Angeles fully. No, because mostly it's a city based on the narratives of cinemas. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So, right. Los Angeles, I mean, people have. Um, well, geographers in particular, um, writers about people who've written seriously about Los Angeles have pointed this out that it's the most 
well-known, it's the most visually seen, the most visually witnessed city in all of the world because it appears in so many movies. Even if people don't know that they're looking at Los Angeles, everyone has seen Los Angeles. Right, so... <laughs> or they say at least a part of Los Angeles. Or at least a part, or at least a part. But well said, well said, well said. Because... Um, uh, and this and that's just it. You only see fragments. You only see bits. You only see parts. Um, and so again, all of the stereotypes are true, but none of them fully explain what Los Angeles is. We're sitting in Beverly Hills right now. The stereotypes of Beverly Hills are movie stars, um, plastic surgery, swanky, swanky wine bars. Um, uh, and <laughs> you know this is a part of LA it's very real but it's not all of LA I mean just this morning I was in the in literally in the Los Angeles River which is completely paved over um, which flows through East Los Angeles uh, which which it, I can't even possibly imagine a more different experience of standing in the Los Angeles River in downtown LA in East LA than I am sitting here drinking this wine in Beverly Hills. And these are just like minutes apart. What is your favorite spot or one of your favorite spots in LA? Something that's not the common spots normal tourists would visit. Well, I would, I would have to, let, let me repeat myself. I would say, I think people should go to the Los Angeles River. It's, um, it's this, the Los Angeles River is the reason Los Angeles exists in the first place. The reason people started settling here was because there was a, it's the only, one of the only places in this part of the country where there's an above ground source of fresh water, cons consistent, which is the Los Angeles River. And um, uh, there, there's, there's uh, uh, an incredible history to the Los Angeles River. People have used it for agriculture, people have lived off of it for centuries for millennia, actually, Native Americans. Um, and it's only in the past couple hundred years, two centuries or so, that people have um, decided to forget about the Los Angeles River. People have immigrated to Los Angeles because of its natural features, because of the sunshine, because of the mountains, because of the ocean. Because, because of the promise of a healthy lifestyle. Um, this was an early 19th century narrative, and what wasn't in that narrative was the Los Angeles River. Okay, why not? We don't know. The Los Angeles River has been blocked out from the past 200 years of Los Angeles history, and yet it remains, to this day, one of the central natural features of the city. It's where, um, whenever it rains, in the entire watershed, whenever it rains, all of that water gets dumped into the LA River, which has been um, grotesquely uh, channelized by the Army Corps of Engineers um, uh, and uh, in the 1930s, um, and it, it's become it's become it's become erased from the collective memory of Angelinos, of people who live here. To me, it seems that in LA there are two main organizing forces mm -hmm. in the space of the city. One, of course, is car, because it's a city made around cars, made around streets. Clearly, the lack of public transportation is a, it's an evidence for that. A second, also, is just they're organizing itself, itself around the information. I mean, the fact that so many subcultures can have their own place and their own spots, and so widespread and so not, not concentrated in one place, it's because they can arrange through social networks, email, uh, old right, newspapers, right, 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 right. so... Well, it's a, it's a great question. Um, okay, so two parts. One, yes, LA has a transportation problem. I've long said that the only thing I don't like about Los Angeles is that it's very hard to get around. Um, uh, it, uh, again, and this goes back to the very first question you asked about, it sort of defies these... Um, imag the, the recognizable categories that we have of what cities are. So, we think city. Okay, I'm going to a city. I know, I know certain ways to behave. None of those certain ways to behave work here, partly because transportation is so complicated. Um, so, uh, it's, 
it's, it's so complicated, it's so um, unorthodox, and it's so unexpected. You would have no idea how to get around here, really, unless, unless someone told you. Um, if you re- even if you rent a car, it's not altogether obvious. <laughs> <laughs> like you still have to know where to go, right? Um, um, so there's that, and then to link that with the notion of like telecommunications, where um, uh, distance doesn't matter because you can uh, text or Skype or call someone through your iPhone at any moment. Um, you can arrange yourself I, to, to well, do this LA, official play. Okay, here, here's just a hypothesis. I'm just thinking here. Uh, this may or may not be true, but I wonder if L.A. is an example of... Well, okay, let me back up a second. I think the notion of a, a, a despatialized world, or in other words, a non-geographic world, erasing geography because of telecommunications, um, I think that is... Um, I think that Los Angeles may be an early example of debunking that myth. Because we have that. Everyone in L.A. has an iPhone. Well, not everyone, but... <laughs> everyone who drives a car has, has an iPhone. Um, um, people communicate through Skype. People communicate through, um, you know, texting, whatever. All these means of communicating without traveling to see people, all right? Everyone has that already, it's established. And yet, traffic is, and transportation are still a problem. You know, there's still tra- traffic jams on the freeways all the time, so. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, excuse me. So I wonder, this is just a total hypothesis, this is a little throw in the dark. I wonder if Los Angeles is an example of that theory not working, you know, the, 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 the theory that um, telecommunications reduce um, consumption of fossil fuel by driving cars and transporting our bodies around, I wonder if that's um, just not true. Like, we do it anyways, and we, tele- we communicate anyways, we do both. So, last easy question, what's your favorite restaurant in L.A.? <laughs> Uh, I would have to go with uh, Park's Barbecue. Uh, it's a Korean barbecue restaurant. It's on uh, Vermont Avenue. Uh, it's in Koreatown, uh, which is near, which is uh, west of downtown. Uh, fabulous dining experience. I highly recommend it. Especially if you don't like meat, I do not recommend it. If you eat meat, I highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Nick. Bye.